All right, guys, we should be live. Welcome to another episode of Geez, Will This Guy Get a Haircut? Finally. Uh, my name is Jason Hebert. This is Jason Hebert Live. And we have a very special episode today. We have a special guest co host that you probably will remember. So we're going to give a minute just for some people to get in the chat here. Let's pull it up on. Oh, that's the wrong link. Well, I can see you guys through the main chat, but let me just pull you up on YouTube. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Marky Davis, who asked us to mention her with her group, We Help the Missing. Ooh. Give me just a moment here. Okay. All right, guys, just bear with me one second and we can get into tonight's show. I just want to make sure I can see your chat. So if you have any questions, I can answer them. Okay, Toby here. And all right, well, I'm going to start reading it now. Okay, I'll pull it up like that. And give me just a moment. Sorry, guys. Let me start reading while this loads. Having a couple technical difficulties. That's why it took us a I knew that was going to happen. Okay. Okay, good. We got a good amount of people in the chat. All right, everybody. So we often have a guest co-host to assist with interviews, but tonight is a little different, a little more special. When I started this series a couple of weeks ago, I reached out in the Facebook groups, offering my support to anyone that had a missing loved one and offering to interview uh, them to help spread awareness of the case. Almost immediately, I received a response from Tammy Spang, whose daughter Ashley had gone missing just a month prior. Tammy was frantic to find her daughter and was looking for any avenue to get her story out and to help bring her home. And while Ashley's whereabouts remain unknown, her interview has led to many leads being generated in numerous tips. And while she continues to spend every minute, each and every day, searching for her precious baby girl, she has decided to take the horror of her situation and to use it to help others, hoping to provide comfort to those going through a similar ordeal. So, Tammy, I can't even tell you how much I respect your strength for coming forward to help with this interview. And I think I speak for everyone listening when I say you're an inspiration. Thank you, Jason. And we're happy to have you. Thank you. So before we begin, do you want to give any... Well, actually, we'll wait till after if you want to give some quick updates on Ashley's case, because we did we have learned a few things that we can say from, you know, as far as getting in touch with the landlord, things like that. So we'll kind of give some people some updates. So let's go into the show. On February 8th, David Koenig, a local amateur MMA fighter from Branson, Missouri, was staying at the Peachtree Inn, an establishment which he knew the owner of. Sometime between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m., David texted a couple friends that he may be in some trouble. Within an hour, his friends texted back, but David did not respond. He has not been seen or heard from since. David had lost his cell phone months prior and had been using an old iPhone that required Wi-Fi to work. So his family and friends waited patiently to hear from him. But no messages ever came. At six foot six and an amateur MMA fighter, David was hardly incapable of taking care of himself. He would regularly contact family, of which he was particularly close with his baby sister. While he had dropped off the grid and avoided social media for spans of a couple days to a couple weeks before, David not being heard from for months at a time is unheard of. And as of August 8th, it will be six full months since his disappearance. David had been having some struggles recently in his life particularly after accidentally shooting off one of his fingers shortly before a fight that could have catapulted his career to the next level. This injury caused the fight to be canceled and ruined what could have been his shot at the big time, causing David to spiral into a depression. When David's hotel room was searched, it turned up only one item, a bag of bullets, which David had called for later and somebody did come and pick up, but we're not 100% sure that that was David. And the family has thus far been able, been unable to get a hold of surveillance footage from the Peachtree Inn. Those sporadic sightings of David at gas stations and walking along the highway since his disappearance have been reported. David's family has been unable to verify for certain that these sightings were indeed him. Tonight we have Tracy Koenig on the show to give us the particulars of David's recent days leading up to February 8th. 
in the hopes that telling his story will motivate someone with information to come forward and help her find her son. Tracy, I want to thank you for coming on the show tonight. I want to say I'm so sorry for what you're going through and let you know you have our support. Thank you. Thank you so much. So why don't you tell us a little bit about David and lead us into what we do know happened back on February 8th. Wow. Well, I mean, a lot to say about my son. He, he's very well known in, in our community. Um, you know, as, as you were talking about, you know, he's an MMA fighter and a lot of people followed his, um, his fights and, you know, and just watched him, but he just had, I mean, he just had a super magnetic personality. Anybody that met Dave will remember him forever. I mean, he's just loud and opinionated and big inside and out. I mean, and he, you know, he's as, as scary as he can be. He's also, you know, he's a super good guy. I mean, he'd stand up for anybody. So he's very well liked. Um, but Dave, you know, he also had his struggles. And, you know, you had mentioned um, his the accident they had had with his finger. And it was kind of a turning point for him, even though he'd had some battles before that. But he never quite got back on track after that. And um, I, I really feel like, you know, in the end, we just had a, we, it was kind of a tough love thing for me. I actually had asked him to leave the house and he was back and forth. And unfortunately, the last time I saw my son, we had a horrible fight. Um, and I, you know, he disappeared two days later. So every kid has their struggles, but for my son not to contact me it is unbelievable because he knows, he knows more than anything that I will always be there for him. And he hadn't contacted his dad. His dad was his best friend. He hadn't contacted his brother. He hadn't contacted his sister. And even though she's eight years younger than him, they're super, super close. Um, the last contact that we had was a message to my son on February 8th, my younger son, um, happy birthday. And that was it. Okay. And there have been a couple sightings besides the highway and kind of walking around, but um, yeah. do you want to get into like him going to someone's house and what exactly yeah. happened there? Yeah, and this has not really been talked about before, but, um, and it's not a for sure 100% fact, because, but someone that he went to high school with contacted me after I reported him missing and said, no, no, he was at my house on the 9th. He was in um, a house in Miriam Woods. And it was actually a couple that he went to high school with. Um, and that would be the here. next day. So. Yeah, it was the next day. And he, he showed up there with two other individuals. Uh, I'm not going to name names, but a male and a female. Um, and he went there to actually not to see his friends from high school, but to see the brother. And supposedly it was to buy a speaker or sell a speaker. I don't know that that's what it really was. I don't think it was. Um, but she said that it was definitely Dave, that she had a conversation with Dave for a couple hours. They were talking a lot and that these three people left together at the same time. So he was there. Don't really know his exact purpose of being there, but he was there and these people have been interviewed. There, two of them were actually um, locked up in Taney County Jail at the time when we found out. And so they were interviewed in jail and we still don't know what kind of car they left in, where they left and went to. Um, the male especially isn't really, he's saying that he didn't leave with Dave, but the girl, and I believe her because she has no reason to lie, says they definitely left together, but she did not see the vehicle. Okay, so we get differing stories. Tammy, yeah. Anna. So this was at, was this at the trailer or was this at the hotel? Which one? This was at, it had a trailer in Miriam Wood, okay. which is probably about 10, 15 minutes from my house. Okay. And at the, tr at the hotel, there was no cameras, right? Or like there, there is cameras. I don't know there why we have not gotten video surveillance. And it might be because I didn't report my son missing for a few weeks. Um, it might be that that video doesn't go back that far. 
but I never got a straight answer from anybody as to where that video really is and why I haven't seen it. And it's right. upset me greatly because somebody picked him up and left with him from that motel. Yeah. And it's even more disturbing that you can't get the security footage because the owner apparently was a friend and even maybe a bit of a fan of Dave, right? Yes. Of his fighting? Yes. So and, and he was kind of involved in the beginning. I haven't heard from him in a long time. I think after having, you know, probably about 10 different searches of his motel and being questioned, he probably backed off a little bit. But um, there's been a lot said about that. But as far as we can see, he didn't have anything to do with the disappearance. So, and the only thing that was left in the motel was the bag of bullets. According to the owner of the motel, the only thing he left there was a bag of bullets. All of his belongings were still at his, at the time, girlfriend's house, which I have not received back. And somebody came and got those things. Correct. Somebody picked those things up. Um, yeah, that girlfriend had actually told me she was going to drop off his things at my house. And then when I had next talked to her, she said, well, somebody actually came and picked it up when I was gone. I don't know who it was. I'm assuming it was Dave, she said, because he picked up his things and his things only. And she specifically said nothing of hers was touched. She even had, I think she said a crossbow close by and that was hers that I guess was worth some money. And uh, nobody touched it, but his things were, everything was gone. All of his clothes, his guitar, any belongings he had. I've hardly anything of my son. So yeah, that's, that's, that's another strange story hmm. without any real answers. Yeah. And she's been questioned a bunch. And the police haven't ruled anyone out. It seems, no. or at least they haven't told you if they have. Um, I mean, we've had a lot of little leads and tips here and there that might have been ruled out, but none of that has been ruled out. No, we don't really know what happened. No, okay. not ruled out. Do you want to get into the possible sightings of him? There are at least, I think, a Walmart, a highway, a lookout place. Do you want to kind of go into those as what you know, if you think they're all real, if some are real? Um. Yeah, you can. Yeah, definitely. Just in um, case people in that him? area see him. Yeah, there was those two in Foresight that I think were about on the 11th of February, so right after he went missing. Um, one walking along the highway going towards Foresight, and um, this was a woman who thinks it was him. It wasn't for sure, but she described Dave, and it sounded just like him. And, you know, she mentioned a black backpack, which he had. She mentioned his red flannel shirt, which... I had just bought him one. It was probably, you know, um, and I, I think she said he had a hat on. And I wasn't so sure it was him, but I wasn't so sure it wasn't. But then very shortly after that, on the same day, I got another lead because um, I had just recently posted about him being missing from a girl who had met him before. And I don't think she spoke to him, but she said she saw him a couple hours ago on that day. She said when she posted, she said, I just saw him a couple hours ago at the lookout in Forsyth at the lookout, walking past there by himself with the black backpack. Same description. But that was it. Only those two sightings on that day. So that was around the 11th of February. Um, we also had someone that Dave went, I believe he went to high school with her and she contacted me. Um, I guess it was sometime in early March or mid March. And she said she had seen Dave a couple weeks, maybe two or three weeks before that. And then before that again, so two separate incidences where she's seen him in a, at a gas station in Springfield, Missouri, which is about an hour from where we live. Um, a pretty seedy gas station. We had all been, I went over there. Um, one of the detectives had been over there. We had some friends of Dave's stake the place out overnight a couple times to try to see if we could find him. Nobody had seen him. Um, but she had said he, she did see him. And the second time he wasn't looking so good. He needed a shower really bad. She offered to let him come over and take a shower even. Um, you know, she thought he might be obviously, you know, using 
Um, definitely not himself, not not in a good way. And again, this is it can't be proved, but I, I don't see what this person would have to gain by lying. And she knows Dave on a personal level. I mean, not close friends, but they were friends at one time, you know, so she knows him. But that I'm, I'm going to assume that was either late February or early March that she saw him. And I know she has no reason to lie, but as far as uh, mis well, I get mistaken it, for some chance of being mistaken. I guess what I'm trying to ask is how likely since it's an hour away, would it have been for someone to happen to bump into him at a random gas station an hour away? Or is this an area he was known to frequent or something? It was an area he was known to frequent. Okay. Um, yeah, it definitely was. Dave spent a lot of time in Springfield and it's a city outside of Branson and not very far from here. Any, any, I won't say that anybody that he was associating with over there were his friends, but um, Dave had a couple different sets of friends. You know, Dave, like I said, he battled with his addiction, but he was either, you know, in the gym and on top of things and, you know, had some really good friends who were real friends to him, or he had those type of friends that would have been with him in Springfield that really were not his friends that we didn't know them because he wouldn't bring them around his family because they weren't his friends at all. They were just, I guess, connections or some place to stay when he wasn't feeling so good about himself. Okay. Tammy, I'm going to kind of go through these pictures here. Do you want to get a question in just I mean, so I can? Obviously he's, you, you can't miss this guy. Right. You know, like he's not only is he huge, but he has like so many tattoos. And you said he has like a raspy, rough voice. Yes. I don't know if you were able to grab any of the video footage for him, but um, a couple interviews that were on um, my Facebook page for him. Yeah. Dave's got a really loud, deep, raspy voice that you cannot mistake. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. He, he's just not a quiet person. Yeah. Right. I didn't grab the video only because I've had issues playing it and it plays over us and there's okay. a delay. But I will link to it in the uh in the bottom so if people want to hear the voice. Okay. Help yeah. identify. And if anybody uh is interested in joining Dave's page, uh do you want to go over that to yeah. help with the search? Uh, we have a Facebook group for Dave that someone created for me right right after we reported him missing and it's grown immensely in the past five and a half. I guess it's been about five months since we've had the page. Um, so we've got over 5,000 members and growing closer to 5,500 and it's called mystery of the missing fighter. And um, that is the only Facebook page or any other social media page that I endorse. There are others out there that are not endorsed by me or okay with me. That's the one um, that you can get true information on. Anything on there has been approved by me or any of the admin on that page. Yeah. There is also like a search page. There is. There is actually a small search page. Um, you know, and I can't even think of the name of the link for it because we just started it and it's not even been very successful yet, but um, we do plan on doing more searches. So if there is a page for a search that you come across, that's actually legit as well. But no other Facebook groups that use David's name are endorsed by me. Okay. We do have a question from the chat. Um, okay. Jennifer Flanagan. So she's wondering why is the guy lying about leaving with David, the guy in the trailer? I don't know. He's been interviewed several times. Mm. I would love to know why he's lying because um, he did leave with them because the girl has no reason to, to lie about that. She, she's just a mommy. She's got a bunch of little kids. She's not a bad person. She's, and, and this guy, obviously he was in jail when he was interviewed and he was interviewed several times and um, actually volunteered to give up his cell phone at one point and let us look through it. But the cell phone suddenly could not be found and we've never gotten hold of it. Uh, so yeah, mystery of the missing fighter, guys. That's her. 
That's her page. Um, growing strong. Hopefully, it can help bring him home. Of course. So we get differing stories. Um, hmm. And now, do you get the sense that if the police did suspect someone, they would kind of fill you in, or is it more like we can't let you know that? They give me little bits and pieces. They do tell me some things. They don't tell me everything. Um, but in all honesty, I feel like I give them more leads and tips than they give me. <laughs> right. And unfortunately, I, that is... A I, think, I think they're following through on things that I get more than they do. Um, and it's because of the social media platform, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and Tammy, I had watched your interview and I know you're running into the same thing. People yeah. are scared to talk for whatever reason. They're petrified, which well, scares me. Yeah. And, you know, we get we get all these tips from people and then we take it to the police and they I don't know if they can't do a lot with it. They won't do a lot with it. I don't know why. Yeah. Happens. And then they want and then and people contact me and they want to give me like horror stories. And yeah. And I stopped now. I kind of have gotten to the point where I stop people in the tracks and I'm like, you got to call somebody else yeah. and I'll send them a phone number. And yeah, so I they just, you, were, you were saying something earlier about kicking down some doors or something like that. Something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, I know about that. Let me just tell you that right now. Like we have to do, you know, we have to go out there and do our own work. And I, you know, I commend you for that because it's really hard. We really need people that are people that are watching and people that are reading about this stuff to give us the tips and stuff like that because you know, it's not like TV where the cops go out and figure it all people out. You just need to realize that we don't care who they are if they're going to call in those yeah. tips. We don't even need to tell care. them. Name. They just it's need not to about that. The information. Nobody yeah. cares what they I mean, we don't care who they are. Um even if they had some involvement, but they know somebody had a lot more involvement, just, you know, they, I just wish people would put themselves in our place and realize that, you know, it could also be your kid. It is not that far fetched because I never thought, and Tammy, you never thought that it would, we would be in this position and it happens. And it happened to my, you know, my Hulk of a son who never, I have had, He's had his struggles and I have worried about him day after day for many different reasons, but this is not one that I ever would have imagined. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. And since you're kind of describing his appearance, huge guy, obviously there's about 50 things that you could spot him from a mile away, but oh, do you yeah. want to, do you want to go into like any more specifics? We know he's six foot six, uh, muscle bound, uh, as we see in the pictures, missing a finger. Do you want to go, in case he's sitting down or something, going to the specifics of his tattoos in case it's not that obvious how tall he is and he's sitting, um, something like that. He's got a bunch of tattoos. There's a lot of description on my page, but I can give you a little bit. I know, I believe it's his left arm, one of his arms. He's, it's a pretty distinct tattoo of a scorpion. It was, cool. um, that was his first tattoo. And he's got um, on his belly, he's got one that says the bullpen mafia. Okay. Um, he's also got something that says Omerta. I'm not sure of the meaning behind that. That's the but, code code of silence for the okay, like, something mob. like that. Yeah. And then he also has on his chest, kind of up by his clavicle, even he's got a skull with wings. And he's got some more also. I can't think of them, but those are the most distinct that he has. Um no like crazy birthmarks or anything, but Dave at the time that he went missing and for a while before that he was kind of scruffy and most likely he is more scruffy than that picture that you kind of had up there. You mm. know, longer beard, probably not crazy long, but kind of long and bushy and, you know, mountain man kind of looking, but, but handsome mountain man. <laughs> That's Dave. I mean. And it, it's also worth mentioning. He might, we heard he might be a Fairdale skinnier, at least less muscle bound, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, Especially if he was um, messing around with drugs. Okay. I'm sure he probably has lost some weight, but I could be wrong. I mean, we've had tips from people that thought they saw him that said, no, he looks healthy and he's strong and big. And I don't know that that was him. There's nothing to prove it. But, you know, he could be. He could be thinner. I can't imagine Dave being under 200 pounds. I mean, as, as tall and big as he is, he's. I've seen him thin before 
and he's still never been that thin. And that picture, he's well, that picture, he's pretty big. Oh, that sorry. picture, he's not huge in that picture. He's probably in that picture, I'd say about 235 pounds. <laughs> the one you're showing. Okay. And then that one, he's more like what, 250 or something? Yeah, 245. That's actually not even his biggest right there. I mean, we've had other pictures of him even, but very that's probably about 255 in that fight picture you just showed. Okay. <laughs> Which of course makes it I'm I'm into MMA quite a bit actually, and that makes him a heavyweight, wow. of course. Yeah, yeah. He was or I guess an heavy. amateur might even be super heavyweight. I'm not sure. Uh he was was he super heavyweight? It might be 260 think, the cutoff. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I think he was I think he was a heavyweight. He was usually he'd usually go in at about 250, 255. He had to be under 255, I think it was. Okay. But either way, and like most fighters, he can fluctuate. So we just don't want anyone to get fixated on one particular sure. yeah. look. I mean, he has a lot of different looks, as you can see. Actually, in that one picture that you just showed a minute ago, um uh the back where the flyer is. Oh. I don't know if you can bring that flyer up again. Um this one here? That one. The third one in from the left in the middle, where under where it says reward. Okay. And I know you can't see a lot of them there, but he was pretty thin in that picture. Okay. Up up one, right above where it says reward. Yeah. You still, you, you still can't miss him. I mean, right, exactly. You know? Yeah. And this down here, the very bottom right picture might be a good representative that of was like very said, recent. That was actually right. I'm going to say that was like late November, right after his birthday. Um, okay. And he and I were taking a hike together, and that was a picture that I had took of him just pretty recently. And he kind of has the mountain man look going on he there, sure right? Has. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind yeah. of the look he was going with. And I would assume he's, pro if, you know, he's probably pretty scruffy now, too. But I could be wrong. I have no idea. Um, but that's his dad. <laughs> oh, that's okay. his dad. That's his dad. That's my husband. <laughs> like he looks yeah, he looks good. He's a, look, it's a little older there. A little older there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I and was wondering there. that too. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Dave. That was uh, kayaking. And, and David's dad is who trained him from a from a baby, right? From a. Uh, Dave's been in the gym. Yeah, I mean, my other son trained for a while too, but he's definitely not into MMA like Dave. Um, and Dave just loved it from the time he was walking. He was in the gym, and even when Rick and I were just going in there to work out. We would bring him along with, and he'd be in the little daycare in there. And as soon as he was old enough, he was out there. So, yeah, that's his whole life. My husband has a gym um, where he's, Dave spent a lot of time. And I think in that picture that you showed, he was showing you a picture of Dave hung in the gym that has his purple belt wrapped around it. Mm. And it, it's pretty heartbreaking. I mean, for my husband, he walks anytime he walks in that place, it's just constantly an absence. Okay. Do you? <clears throat> Um, we did, we actually didn't discuss this too much, so I just kind of leave the option to you. Do you want to go into any of the specifics of any of his friends, the girls he dated, anything like that, or do you feel it's not relevant? Uh, I don't know that I really can get into it. Okay. Um, the last girl he was with is the one who had his things, and I'm not going to mention names. Um, they weren't together very long. She's been questioned a bunch. Nothing's been ruled out or ruled in. Not really sure can't really okay. get into it for other reasons. Um, so Linda Richardson in the yeah. chat asks, um, is, did he have any mental health issues by any chance? Any struggles with that? Uh, yeah, but I think most of it was just from, uh, from drug use. He had anxiety. I mean, that's really about it. We know uh, that. I get that bad. I'm being serious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah well, therapy was his fighting his training. And, you know, that's what held him together. But I've seen him clean up and, you know, be pretty solid and, and pretty, you know, pretty okay. But yeah, he definitely had some struggles. No like diagnosis or anything like that. Just some really bad anxiety problems mainly and maybe some depression towards the end. Okay. So, but, but no, um, official that like you say diagnosis or he wasn't no. on like medication or something. No, he wasn't or, medicated. Actually, he was very against medication, which is kind of odd, but he never wanted to take anything for anxiety or depression or anything like that. He kind of wanted to do, um, handle that himself. So okay. that's when Jim came in and it worked really well as long as he stuck to it. 
Okay. We have um, Tammy. Well, uh, Tammy, do you want to ask a question? I have a couple things from the chat. Would you rather me read them now or would you like to ask something? Go ahead with the chat. That's good. Okay. I just now opened the chat, so I'm just now reading it. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do everything. Okay. Um, so Carrie Hazel just has a message for you. She says prayers for David for a safe return home with the prayer hands and strength for you, Tracy. God bless. Thank you, Carrie. Da Darla Robinson asks, does the girl stay at Peachtree? I think she means the girl. No, she does not. She does not. I think they might've had an argument actually beforehand. Um, not really sure why, but Dave was not staying with her the last couple nights. No, I think he was by himself. I know he was interacting with a couple different people and I know who they are and I've spoken to them, but it was not her. And he was, I'm sorry if you mentioned this, he was at the hotel for a couple nights, right? Before Two nights. That? Okay. Two nights. That yeah. was the second one, the one he disappeared. Yes, correct. He stayed there the night of the sixth and the night of the seventh. And then late that night of the eighth is when we didn't hear from him again. And so the text messages that were sent to his friends. Yes. Um, are you, you might have already touched on this, but do you know like the exact nature? And I know it was just like, I think I'm in trouble. I need help. And then how long it took for them to get back? Um, the first friend, I think, did go back and forth with Dave a couple times. He was babysitting his not babysitting, was watching his two-year-old son. And I think his uh, fiance was at work or something or hadn't gotten back yet. So he wasn't able, he didn't have a vehicle. Um, and then I think when he got back to him again, Dave had stopped messaging. But yeah, pretty much the nature of it was just, you know, you know, kind of like a, hey, bro, I'm, I'm in trouble. I think I might've gotten myself into a mess and I, and I might need you to come get me. I might need your help. And that was that. Um, the second person... Um, another really good friend, and this guy is actually tied into our gym and is a, is a really good guy and, um, you know, a good friend of my husband's as well. Uh, he was out of state on business. And I think by the time he got the message, I don't even know if they actually transpired back and forth. I think once he had finally gotten that message from Dave, he just didn't answer. Yeah. And he did not message my husband, which right. I thought was kind of weird. I mean, especially, you know, me. Oh, did I do that or did you? Okay. Um, I know if he's in trouble, he's not going to message his mom, right. obviously. but you know, you showed a picture of my husband there. Obviously my husband is not a, you know, he, he can handle himself. My, my son and my husband were very close and he did not message him. So I'm thinking he wanted to keep him out of whatever was going on. And you said that he's really close to his sister and he would definitely be. He is. He's close with his, both of his siblings, but his little sister and he, personality-wise, they're very, very, very much alike. And they have um, just a special bond and they're, they talk all the time. And um, it's been extremely hard on her. Um, I'm not going to get into detail, but we've had a lot of struggles since he's been gone. She's had a lot of struggles. And... Um, yeah, her birthday came and went, and that was just strange to me, just nothing. And it's just not like him. He would do any, I mean, he would do anything for any of us. And my son was mad at me at the time. I mean, I am going to, you know, I'll put that out there. He and I did have an argument, and there was reasons behind it. Still can't understand why, you know, he wouldn't reach out to me. But there was no argument between his siblings or his dad. So for him not to reach out is really scary. And after a few weeks, we knew something was weird. I mean, yeah. unless he's trying to protect us from something, something really bad happened. Yeah. No, but I we don't that. know what. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so David's stuff is no longer at the girl's house, right? That's what she says. She and says somebody picked it up. Everything. And it's worth mentioning that whoever picked it up knew exactly what to take and yeah. took only David's stuff. So it's not like it was a robbery, for example. Right. That's what she said. Well, she, I guess she leaves her house open and she must, he must, she said he must know when I go to work because whoever it was came in, took all of his stuff and left and left all my stuff where it was. So don't know if that was actually the truth. It could have been the truth, but I can't prove it either way. 
I just know that I haven't seen any of these things at all. I have hardly anything that belongs to my son, which really hurts. Okay. Uh, we have a few questions in the chat. Carrie Hazel asks, I believe the answer is no, but she asked, was David asked to leave Peachtree? No, he was not. Okay. Darla Robinson asks, could trouble have been from people at Peachtree? Mm, maybe, but I don't think so. And how do we know that he left between 11 and 1? How do we know uh, that? Because of the, the messages on his Facebook Messenger which by the way, we still do not have access to his messages from Facebook after six months. We still do not have a Facebook warrant or Facebook has not approved it yet. Taking their sweet Otherwise we'll be able to read everything. And all I have are the yeah. screenshots that were sent to me by his friend. And they didn't withhold anything. They actually spoke with the police and you know, they were super cooperative. So they were completely honest and sent me everything, sent them everything. But that's, that's all I know. Okay. A couple more questions. Uh, the second of which I actually was planning on asking. Uh, but the first is Carrie Hazel said, does David have cash on hand to survive the road? Well, that's on the road. An interesting question. Because no, Dave, you know, usually didn't have any money. I mean, at that time, he really wasn't working. But there were a few people that I had gotten some information from that said that Dave had had quite a bit of cash on him right around that time. Like loose cash. That's actually not something I've never really brought up before, but um, yeah. Don't know where it came from. Don't know if that's money that he was owing to somebody that he had to pay back. Don't know. I don't think he had money before that because I think he told me that I think the owner of the peach tree, um, we call him G <laughs> that's not his real name, but that's what he goes by. He even said, I think Dave gave him like 20 bucks, threw him 20 bucks towards the room. And that was about it. So, I mean, I don't think he had a lot of money at first, but I guess maybe at the latter end of it, I don't know if it's true, but that's what I'd heard. Okay. A uh, question from Linda Richardson. I had actually meant to ask this to you in our previous conversation. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But if he was involved in drugs, is there a chance he could have gone to rehab and be there now? Or you said no way because he would have called and checked in? I doubt it. I don't even know that my son had ID on him when he went missing. So unless he's a John Doe somewhere, but again, a six foot six big guy with tattoos is very hard to be a John Doe. Um, he's on my insurance policy. I don't know. I mean, it's a thought. It's something I've thought of, but I, I doubt it. And if somebody's going to go to rehab, they're going to want to tell their parents or their family that they're there. I would think so, especially if yeah. he's been there for this long and he's cleaned up yeah. his act and his brain is cleared again, you know, because yeah. sometimes when you're first detoxing, your yeah. brain isn't thinking correctly, but it's been six months. And if he's been in a rehab for this amount of time, then he's Dave again, and he'd be wanting to talk to his family. Yeah. Okay. Tammy, do you have any additional questions? No. Um, other than, you know, like, when people um, get on drugs, you know, really bad or whatever, they go into, they might go into a psychosis and then just go and not even, you know, no, but I don't feel like that's how your son was because he was he was all there, right? I mean, he I've was having seen, struggle. I mean, he always knew who he was. I mean, he just, yeah. I mean, he definitely, you could tell if he wasn't himself sometimes, but no, I mean, he would never yeah. be that out of his mind that I'd ever seen. He always, yeah. Dave would have chosen his family over anything in the entire world. Yeah. He would have yeah. done anything to protect us, which is, you know, some of my thoughts too, but um, that's the only thing that mattered to him really when it came down to it was, was his family. Yeah. yeah so we, family, so I can tell. Oh. yeah, you're, you're a great representative for him, Tracy. I'm sure mm -hmm. he's extremely proud. Yeah. Um, so we do have 
uh, a question that I, I know the, the answer to this one, but uh, if his friend was at Peach Tree, why not go to him if in trouble? It's because it took him about an hour to get back, and by then it was too late, correct? Yeah, yeah. he was already not answering. Okay. And I and, don't know why he didn't drive there anyway, but um, that is a good question, actually. But, yeah, I mean, that friend in particular has jumped through hoops to try to, like, help. I He had nothing to do with Dave's disappearance. He's cried to me about it. Yeah, I mean, it's. I don't know why he didn't drive there, but he didn't have a car at the time. And it, it, it's also worth worth mentioning, particularly since you're not suspicious of him, that with Dave only being able to connect via Wi-Fi and things, the friend might have just thought like, oh, that's Dave doing his thing. I'll hear from him in a couple hours. Oh, yeah. Well, nobody ever would have thought that something like this would happen to Dave. So even if you thought he, he said he was in a little bit of a trouble and might need you to come get me or something like that, I don't think anybody would have ever went into panic mode because he's Dave. He's not just your average person. Right. I mean, my son, in my eyes, but also probably in other eyes, he's like Superman. I mean, he's yeah. industri- I mean if you knew him, you'd, you'd understand. Yeah. Right. And his friends looked at him like that too. He was the guy that if they had a problem, they would call him. Right. And he'd be there. Okay. And also worth mentioning, I had kind of mentioned it in the intro, but we didn't go into depth. He had had little periods, whether it was because he was going through struggles or just wanted to be alone, where maybe two days, anywhere up to maybe a couple weeks, he was kind of not so much completely off the grid, but kind of staying away from social media, not feeling like yeah. talking to people. So you probably just assume that might have been going on again at first. Oh, yeah. I mean, initially when he first went missing and actually the girlfriend was questioning it and I had some other couple other friends message me about it. And I was like, this is Dave. This is what Dave does. Just let him do his thing. We'll hear from him in a week or so. I'm sure this is nothing. And I honestly, for the first two weeks, didn't think that much of it. And then after that, I started getting really worried. And my husband kind of was like, well, you know, let's give it a little more time. I think everything's fine. You know, you don't want to make a huge spectacle of it because it's just going to make them stay away even more. And yeah, once it started coming up on near a month, my husband called, literally called me and said, you need to go to the police station today. We need to get an investigation started and it can't do anything until we do that. So then it kind of took off. So I feel really horrible that I didn't do something sooner, but I, I honestly didn't think anything right. like this. I really didn't. I he's, did an adult. he's not a, he's not a woman. He's not a girl. He's a 25 year old, big, strong man who, you know, who doesn't have to answer to me if he doesn't want to. That's so crazy. Okay. Um, a question from Linda Richardson. What is the possibility he may n- no longer be in the Branson area? A very good possibility. Okay. I don't think now, he's really far, even though anything is possible. I don't think he's in Branson. So, but you're talking about in our radius, for example, not like Florida or something? No. I mean, shoot. We did send Dave to... Uh, treatment in Southern California and he absolutely loved it a couple of years ago. Um, but no, I don't think so. I think he is in the vicinity. Could be Missouri, could be Arkansas, could be Kansas, but I think it's in that vicinity. So you don't think because he loved California so much, there's any chance he said, I got to get away. Let me go to this place that I love vacation kind of land or anything like that. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I think I really don't, but I wouldn't put it. I mean, I wouldn't completely rule it out, but I would not think that that would be the place to look. And especially from some of the things that I've got coming in, as far as any kind of tips, whether they're bogus or not, because ours have been really weak. (laughs) um, Nothing leads in that direction. But it does lead from here towards Springfield and then maybe beyond could be Kansas city could be St. Louis could be, you know, I don't know. Okay. I actually, uh, I accidentally left a video unlisted for the first like 25 minutes. Uh, but so we just had an influx of like 50 people jump in the chat. So we might, search oh. 
question. Uh, we have plenty of people from the groups that saw the link, but my subscribers hadn't saw it. That's okay. Um, we have a question from Macy Yetz. Uh, his phone location can't be traced. No, his phone location can't be traced because he didn't have a phone service. He just had Wi-Fi. And he wasn't using a phone number. So we are waiting for Facebook to approve the Facebook warrants so we can tap into his Facebook messenger because that was his only communication at the time. Okay. And once you get that, that could be a, a big lead. That could be huge. And it's really sad that it's taken this long to get that and how Facebook has that much control, yeah. even yeah. over the police. They can't, I mean, the police have nothing <laughs> over Facebook. It's so really have you, have you gotten the FBI involved at all? I'm curious because I know I was um, I've asked a numerous times. And unless you're, um, you know, handicapped or elderly or a child or a young mother, they don't want to they don't want to look for a 25 year old man unless they can prove foul play. And even though foul play is suspected in David's case, it's not proved. Right. So, no. I'm going to go over his picture. If you could ask a question, Tammy, because since we have so many new people in the live from my mistake, I want to go over the pictures again. Do you have any other questions? That... Take a minute. I've, I've asked all my questions. They missed all the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll upload, of course, and be there permanently right. for anyone new to the chat. Uh, this is David's father. That's not my son. Uh, that's <laughs> that's, that's not it. <laughs> Tracy, Tracy, do you have anything else that you want to say? Because I like I'm out of questions right now in my brain. I just want to say that if anybody is watching and they're and they're, you know, watching my son's Facebook group too, and I know that there's people on that group that know stuff, you just need to you just need to talk. You just need to let somebody know what you know, even if you think it's insignificant or if it can't be proved. I mean, I have literally had people say, well, I didn't say anything. I heard information, but I didn't say anything because I didn't know if it was true. Well, it's not your job to know if it's true. It's your job to tell us what you think is true. And then we need to have it investigated. All right. You know, this is, this is somebody that's been missing for six months. This is tearing all of our lives apart and you just need to say something we've got five thousand dollar reward out there i mean if that's not enough to get somebody to talk i don't know what is but i don't know what they're afraid of yeah. but nobody's going to know if they call in to a tip line anonymously we are not going to trace your phone number you can call from a you can you can make up a phone number i mean there is a service where you can literally have a, a burner phone number and get rid of it as soon as you make that call. It's free. Yeah. I've done it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And we will not know who you are, but you can give us the information, but I need to find my son. Yep. I get um, that so much. I know you do. And so we, uh, for anyone who missed the beginning, which is my fault, sorry about that, but uh, Tracy does have a Facebook page for David um, called the mystery of the missing fighter. Yes. So that is her page. That's the one she endorses. There is also one um, that's like a search page or something. Yeah. Uh, we're trying smaller. to um, start putting together some some ground searches just with friends and um, people that are volunteering to help Dave, and we're trying to grow that and um, do that on our own. The police have been doing ground searches, but you know people want to help so we're trying to put that together as well and honestly i cannot remember the name of that because we just put it together but it will be linked with mystery of the missing fighter and that is the only page that i will actually endorse so anything that you see on that page is endorsed by me okay okay and that's the tip line on the screen 417-334-3300 yeah, that, that goes directly to branson pd actually okay um, if they don't want to call Branson PD and they want to private message me, I will give them the, the cell phone number of uh, Sergeant Danielle Heil, who is the head of this case. And I have her cell phone number. I'm not going to post it. But if you message me and you don't want to talk to Branson PD, she's very personable. She will not 
question your name. She just needs your information. Um, but no horror stories. I don't need them. If you have some information and you want to talk to somebody, I will give you the, um, I will give you, I will tell you who to talk to. Yes. Okay. So just to be clear, you had said they could message you on messenger to get it yeah. started if they want to give a private tip or something. And at that point you will give them the information for it. I will pass on the phone number. I mean, the Branson PD number is actually, I mean, there's nothing, you can call that in anytime. They're there 24 hours a day to take tips. They don't have to give their name. They just say they have some information on Dave Koenig and it will be relayed back to everybody involved in the case. Okay, and, oh, did you wanna say something, Tim? Oh. Yeah. If, um, if it ends up being the case, Tracy, that for whatever reason, um, David is hiding out, be it to protect you or just maybe thinking, I don't want everyone to see me like this. Let me kind of get over what I'm going through, anything like that. Is And he happens to watch this. Is there something that you want to you know, direct message to him you want to give him? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Dave, <laughs> we're your family and we love you and I don't care what you did or what you're going through, but we will always be here to back you up and to help you through anything. And we'll, I am so sorry if you think that I turned my back on you. I would never turn my back on you. I am always there to help you. I just cannot, just call, just, call somebody just get in touch with us i know that you know how to get in touch with me i know if anybody's phone number you know by heart it's mine i don't care if you call from a different phone and just give me a some kind of a signal some kind of a sign to tell me that you're okay we just need to know you're alive um this takes up every single minute of my day every day there's not a second that i don't think about it there's not a second that your dad doesn't think about it your brother, your sister, I mean, they're, they're, they're still teenagers. They're still trying to, they're trying to decipher whether you are hiding and, and it's my fault for searching for you. And the more I push to find you, the farther you're running away. And I, God, I hope that's not true because I don't feel like I could ever stop searching for you. You just need to, you just need to contact us and, we will help you. If you feel you need to move out of state, we have family out of state. We'll figure it out. We'll do anything that we can do to help you. You just need to communicate that we're always here. Okay. Uh, is, is there anything, Tracy, that Tammy or myself missed that you want to make sure gets out there? Oh, boy. Um, I don't think so. I mean, there's Honestly, there's only so many things that I that I can say. Um, is there, would, is there, does anyone have your feedback? I'm really sorry. I just don't know if it's it's like a. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. I just didn't know if if it was messing with you guys or. I don't hear it. Okay, no problem. What were you saying? Me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is there anything that you did want to? I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, I didn't know if it was bothering you. Sorry. Not really. I mean, I think we pretty much covered most of it. It's just that, I mean, I feel like I'm being led in so many different directions and we are chasing our tails. And I don't know if it's being done to us on purpose. I honestly wonder about that because some of these leads have absolutely nothing to do with the other. <laughs> and it's just really frustrating. I just don't know where to go because you know, we start following something and then another lead pops up and then the first one never gets finished. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. I don't understand people's motives. If, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of bad things that go on in the town of Branson, Missouri that people don't realize it's not all, it's not all Bible belt like people think it is. It really isn't. There's a very dark side to it. And I do not understand the way that people communicate to each other and there's a lot of gossip that goes on. And, and I think that's where a lot of the stories are forming. So a lot of it, I don't, 
you know, a lot of it's probably not true. Yeah. Like little bits and pieces and we're having to put it together like a, you know, a thousand piece puzzle. Okay, and this this we actually have a question from Amanda of the Roddy Crafters. This could, I guess, serve as a little bit of a summary for anyone who missed things in the beginning. Because she asked, "Have there been any rumors you heard going around about your son? Do you want to just kind of, even if it's retreading the same ground, go over anything like that?" It's pretty much the same thing. I mean, I've heard you asked me about, you know, uh, or Linda did about uh, being in a rehab. I mean, I, I heard that re I heard that recently. Don't know that it's true. Don't know that it's not true. Honestly, I find it really hard to believe. Um, a lot of things that I'm really not at liberty to say because until it's proven or not proven, um, I don't want to interfere with the case. So as far as I know, everything that we hear has been rumors. Right. Okay. Uh, so I couldn't really give you a great answer on that one, but for sure. Okay. Well, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on and I really hope that this would be this or your page or whatever, something. The important thing is that it gets to the right person and helps yeah. bring Dave, you know, bring David home or at the very least let you know that he's safe wherever yeah. he chooses to be. Cause he's an adult. He, and if he wants to be somewhere else, of course he can, but you know, you have, you know, you deserve to know. And uh, it sounds like he obviously would let you know if it was in his capability. So we need to figure out what's going on here. I would think so. I can't imagine him not. And yeah, we just need to know. We just need to know what happened. And if he's around and, and he can come home, we need, we need to find out what we need to get, what we need to do to get him home. If we need to get him help, then we'll do that. We'll work through anything. Okay. And, um, Tammy, I think as far as updates on Ashley's case, just to kind of keep it separate, we can put things in the description or whatever, yeah. or did you, okay, that's, yeah. so that's more appropriate. Okay, just because people know you and they're wondering. But okay, Tracy, um, is there any, I, I kind of already asked this, but is there anything else you wanted to, I just want to make sure I'm thorough. No, I just thank everybody for being so supportive. I mean, I have had a, there's a lot of strange things that have happened, but I have had so many good people reach out that want to help, even if they don't know how to help, um, just, you know, keep on praying for him and praying for our family and keep sharing his posts and putting up flyers and just getting the word out there. And if you hear something, anything, say something, please. Absolutely. That, and that last part is the key guys. As she said earlier, sometimes it's the smallest thing and you can think, uh, this isn't going to do anything. This is so small. But even though it's a small piece, there are six other small pieces that get connected because of that small piece. And yes. well, so important. Just if you hear something, say something to somebody. Don't give your name. We don't care. If you do want to give your name and you're in it for the for the reward, I am fine with that too. But if you don't care about the money and you just want to do the right thing, but you don't want your name given then please, by all means, that's that's all we ask. Absolutely. Well, Tracy and Tammy, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I'm so sorry for what you're both going through. And I'm sure you all obviously have each other's support. Um, if you wanted to contact Absolutely. each other, you also have ours, me, my team, the, you know, thank the chat, you. very supportive. Thank you. And we will end it there. And let's let's bring David home safe. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. And so for much. Ashley. Thank you. Yes. We'll have to talk to you soon. Okay. You guys have a good night. All right. I love you guys. You too. Thank you. Mm -hmm.